I know a lot of people that really would like to make more home cooked meals. Problem is, their schedules are so busy, they just don't have the time. That's why I'm going to show you guys what I think is the number one way to save time in the kitchen. And that is to have one good knife and know how to use it. Now there's a lot of different knives out there, but there's only one knife that you're going to reach for 99% of the time, and that is an 8 inch chef's blade. Now the downside is it's going to run you about 100 bucks, but you only need one and if you take good care of it, you'll have it for the rest of your life. Now there are two major things you want to look for in a good knife. And the first thing is a full tang blade. Now all that means is that your blade is going to be one piece of forged steel from top to bottom. The second thing you want to look for is balance. As you can see here, both sides are equally weighted. When you have a knife with a full tang blade and balance, you've got a knife that's going to do all the work for you. All you have to do is guide it along. So now that you got your knife picked out, let's go over how to use it. There's only three simple actions that every home cook needs to know. The draw, the slice, and the chop. Now, the draw only uses the tip of the blade. And what you want to do is take your index finger and place it on top of the blade. This is going to help to guide and control all of the movement. Then you're going to take the tip of your knife and place it on your cutting board away from you. Then, simply draw towards you. Now your free hand is to guide your ingredients. Let's practice on a pepper. Okay, now index finger on top of the blade. I'm going to grab my pepper. Guiding hand. Tip is away from me and I'm going to draw towards me. Away, draw towards. Easy, easy, easy. This is great for cutting strips. Next up is the slice. Now the slice uses the middle portion of the blade and what you want to do is take a nice loose grip on the handle, like you're shaking somebody's hand. Then you're going to place the tip onto the board and gently push the knife away from you. You hear that swish on the board. As you push away, the heel falls down, doing all the dirty work for you. Now, with the slice, your free hand has a couple of jobs. The first is to guide the ingredients along and determine the size of the cuts. And the second is to stay safe. Now, here's how you're going to do that. First, you're going to take that hand, curl up your fingers, and divide them into three segments. As you'll see, that creates a nice vertical ridge, and this is going to be your guide. So I'll bring that onto the board, looking good. Second, to stay safe, you want to be sure that that pinky and thumb are tucked behind your fingers. This is safe. This, not so safe. Okay, so let's practice on some celery. First things first, I'm going to make my vertical ridge, bend those fingers, tuck back the pinky and the thumb so everybody's nice and safe. Then I'm going to grab my knife in a nice loose handshake position. Tip is on the board and the middle of the blade is right over the celery and I'm going to gently push away. And I use my thumb to help push the ingredient through. Now, you know, it's the guiding hand that can be a little bit tricky because the position can feel slightly awkward. So, if this is uncomfortable for you, do me a favor and just practice it every time you're in the kitchen for the next two weeks. And by the time you're done, you'll be a pro. Last but not least, we've got the chop. Now, the chop uses the entire blade and it's really great for when you need to chop things up really small. What you want to do is take the tip of your knife and place it on the board and then take your four fingers, place it on top of the knife. This is going to be your guide. Now, just like the slice, you're going to gently push the knife away. The only difference is you're going to be working on a pivot point, leaving the tip down the whole time. So I'm going to gently push, push, push and then come back the opposite way. You're just working in a semicircular motion here, going back and forth over your ingredients. Now let's practice on our celery, okay? Tip of the knife is on the board, fingers are on top guiding, then I'm going to gently push away. Now you're going to go back and forth, back and forth, working in a semicircular motion. As your ingredients start to get away from you, just flip the knife, Bring them back together. Back to work. Push, push, push. Now how 
easy is that? I'm telling you. Once you guys go out and get yourself one good knife and learn these three basic actions, the draw, the slice, and the chop, you're going to be like a home cooking pro. And you're going to save yourself hours in the kitchen. Thanks for watching. I'm Danny Spees, and I'll see you next time. Oh, guys, you know what? I almost forgot. You want to keep those knives nice and sharp. So here's all you have to do. You got to get yourself a honing steel. This will run you about 20 bucks. Place it perpendicular on your cutting board. Hand comes over the top. Then you're going to grab your knife, and this is how I think about it. 90 degree angle, then you're going to go half of that and half of that. Nice loose grip, right? Draw down and towards you. Nice and light. Three or four times on one side, then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, you'll know you're doing it right because you're going to feel it catching and your knife is going to be nice and sharp. And you know what they say, a sharp knife is a safe knife.